Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dion. This is the Crazy Troll Nation of YouTube. Today is, I believe, October 3rd. I'm really excited for this look. This look is another Instagram challenge. Well, not necessarily an Instagram challenge. It is hashtag Makeup Queens for Mel. And this was initiated by at Lorraine Johnson. I'll have her Instagram below and also that makeup. And I'll have her Instagram below as well. And Lorraine posted a picture of hummingbirds because Mel liked hummingbirds and looking at the different colors. I have notes here, so that's why I'm looking down, so please forgive me. And so when I looked at the picture, there were so many colors in the picture. And it was just beautiful, you know, the hummingbirds, the flowers, the trees. And so the colors that my eye saw, and I do have trouble with color perception sometimes, I think, but the colors I saw were a bright red, white, black, yellow, green, brown, tan, and also variations of some of those colors. And so I was looking at what I had and figured out what I was going to use. And I'm going to use the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette because I really love it. And the shades that we're going to use are... Well, I'll show them to you before I use them, but we're going to use Claret for our red, Imperial for the yellow, which is actually more like a gold. We're going to use this shade here, which is Rope as a tan. We're going to use this shade, Jubilee, for our green. And we're going to use Queen, this shade here, even though it's not a white, but we're going to use this for our brow bone and inner corner highlight. I'm so awkward with how I hold things. So those are the shades that we're going to use. I have in my mind where I'm going to place them, but we'll see what happens. What's on my face right now, the Milk Hydro Grip Primer, the Fenty Bright Eye Eye Brightener in Peach, the 09. And I was, I'm not liking how it's looking. And so then I went in with a little bit of the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Caramel just right here. And I spot corrected around my nose and my mustache, which I'm thinking I just need to shave that thing again. And so, <laughs> uh, set my... Oh, foundation. The Maybelline Dewy and Smooth Fit Me Foundation, and the number is 240. I know it's backwards on your end, but the number is 240 Golden Beige, and I set that with the Lancome Long Time No Shine Translucent Setting Powder. This is not the container it comes in, but I love this container, so I put some in there. That's what's on my face. Also, the Fenty Brow MVP in Soft Black, and I think I did okay with my brows today. This arch is a little higher ironically but I think they're looking okay on my inner lower rim my inner lower waterline which doesn't show up well because it's gold this is NYX retractable eyeliner in MPE 06 gold so that is the first half of my inner rims on the second half of my inner rims is Sephora retractable eyeliner and this shade is number 14 matte moss and so that's the inner rim on the outer half my inner lower lash line area here is the fancy fly pencil and bank tank which is green so i'm trying to stick with the color you see what i'm doing here and on the outer half of my lower lash line is the fancy fly pencil in and big truffle which is brown so i wanted to get that started just to shorten the video as much as possible so i'm going to go ahead and prime oh goodness my fancy eyeshadow primer which i was going to pull out because that's what i always use it did expire and it was i was scraping it so it was almost done and i purchased during the ultra 21 days of beauty cell mac fluid line and groundwork and so i'm going to be using this exclusively to get a good feel for it before i open up another fenty <laughs> eyeshadow primer so this is what it looks like i was hoping it was more brown even though it was described as a taupe and so we're going to be using this and i'm hoping it works well i really don't remember how I felt about it before. A friend of mine told me at some point she thinks I was just over it. <laughs> but for the 21 Days of Beauty, it was very expensive, inexpensive because it was half off. And so I said, you know what, I'll try it again just to see and give it a fair shot, which is why I will be only using this primer until I do get a good feel for it. And if it's something I want to continue using or not, I am used to the Fenty primer because it is a tacky primer. This one is not. 
and it's looking like it's going on patchy. I don't like that, I don't like the color of it. I was hoping it was more skin tone, but as I said, it did have the color description, um, but I was just hoping that it wasn't like this, but it's okay. I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to do, do this eye and crop this out of the video. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take Queen, this shade here, as our brow bone and inner corner highlight. And using this eyeshadow primer, I, I will need to use a brow bone highlight because of the color of it. I had Mountain Dew, so I'm, I'm realizing I'm really chatty and that would be why. Next, we're going to take Imperia, this shade here, and that's going to go on the first half of our lash line. And this is a metallic. Did I see our lash line? The first half of our lid. I don't even know what I said. I'm feeling like I need to build up these colors. And I think it's because I'm used to the Fenty primer, which is tacky. So when I tap on a color, it just stays. Where with this shade of primer I am having to make sure I go back and forth to cover it and it may just be because this is a light shade if it was a darker shade I don't know if I would feel like I'm having this issue but this is what we're working with so far and I'm going to sweep that up a little higher this not being a tacky primer like the Fenty primer it is easier to just sweep over into my transition area than with the Fenty primer and with the loose skin that I have here. We're gonna turn this brush over and go into Clarette, the shade here, which is also metallic, and that's gonna go on the outer half of our lower lash line. Oh my gosh! The outer half of my lid. I'm gonna sweep in between and blend those two colors together very lightly. Is that blending? I don't, hmm. There we go. This is what we're looking like so far, as you can clearly see. <laughs> we're gonna take Antique, this shade here, and that's gonna go in our outer corner, and this is a cream to powder. Just bringing that up a little bit higher on this side to match this side. When I go in with the dense brush, that same shade, to make sure I'm getting the top of that red shade, covering that with antique. And also making sure I'm getting close to the lash line. And to get an edge, hopefully a straight edge which I am not good at doing. I am so not good at doing a lot of things, but I keep trying and that's what we're here for. Hmm. Yeah, that didn't work for an edge. <laughs> I keep telling y'all, not that I keep telling y'all, I know I mentioned it in a previous video, like in my mind, things look one way, but then when I do the look, it, it looks different. <laughs> Is it just me or do you guys deal with that as well? We're gonna take rope this shade right here with a fluffy, a small fluffy brush, and use this as our transition shade, which will help cover up what you still see of that primer. I remember when probably like 10 plus years ago, when everyone was talking about you know the paint pots and the painterly paint pot, and I would look at it like that's not for my skin tone. And so sometimes I would get annoyed. And so I'm just sharing this for if you feel like you need to like something that people rave about and it doesn't work for you where you think that it wouldn't. Think about the person's skin tone as saying that. And other videos I see, not necessarily about the paint pots, but even eyeshadow palettes. And they'll be like, this will be great for a multitude of skin tones. And I'm thinking that would look ashy as hell on me. And so take into consideration the person that's speaking, and not necessarily the person, but what their complexion is, what their undertone is, and things like that, because if you just go off of, 
that someone saying this is a great brow bone highlight this is a great transition shade where this palette is missing a transition shade where this palette is missing an inner corner highlight and these are all things i've heard in videos and i'm thinking um not for me <laughs> so either it'll be the opposite like yes this palette would be great for me or it does have a transition shade for me and and highlight shades and here this person is saying no it doesn't and i'm just like so i'm just saying this to say keep in mind when you review products to keep in mind that even if it's perfect for you it may not be perfect for someone else and if something in a palette is missing for you that doesn't mean it's missing for someone else or if you're thinking this will work for every skin tone chances are it's not it won't what am i doing besides running my mouth and not doing my face at the same time so i think those oh jubilee all right we're going to take antique this brown here on the outer portion of our lower lash line to cover up the brown liner that we put over here and I'm connecting it to up here oh my god it's up in my eye and no my fan is not on and we're going to take Jubilee this shade here and we're going to put that on the inner portion of our lower lash line to cover up that green one thing I really liked about that picture well, other than it was just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I got more shadow in my eyes. Like, I need to stop doing this. Was looking at the picture, you would see pops of color in unexpected places. Like, it's okay, you see a hummingbird. And then you'll see, like, a strip of red, like, in one of the wings. Or, you know, a, a strip of, you know, tan in the background on a tree. And it was just really beautiful. Like, as I really looked at it. because there were so many colors and, it, and and as I'm saying in some places it's like this color just pops out of nowhere it seems like and to me that was just really beautiful this is the brush we use for our transition shade we're just going to sweep this under here which I don't really know if this makes a difference because this shade is almost like a non there shade so we're going to dip back into it the transition shade and see if we can buff it out or buff it down or diffuse it or whatever the term is even though i was happy with how it looked i don't even know why i do this i think just because or to soften it up but sometimes it looks fine the way it is to me i like this and i love this palette so that's all the shades from that palette one of the colors in the picture was a black and it wasn't a prominent but it was there there were just so many colors Ooh, that came out nice. I did purchase the Natasha Denona working set gel liners, whatever they're called. I haven't used them yet, and I purchased them to use as a shadow base, which is something I've been experimenting with, and I haven't used them yet, and I really need to, so I can get a feel for them and how they work. When I used the MAC fluid line as a base it dried so fast and when I used this Stila smudge pot as a base I did have time to work with it but there was a clear line of demarcation when I placed shadow over it like where the smudge pot stopped and where the eyeshadow began and so it looked made it seem like my eyeshadow was patchy, but it was just because of where the gel liner was and where it wasn't. I am liking this look. I'm going to do Sils Boost Mascara Lash Primer on upper and bottom lashes. I was going to go in with the Fenty Full Frontal Mascara and because I'm black, but I'm actually going to use the shade ivy league which is green to tie that in with the green underneath i think that'll be fun if it's noticeable we will find out i also have miss merlot which is like a burgundy but i have so much red burgundy -ish on my lid so let me see if i can bring out the green and i do have the green eyeliners on as well and i wanted to place the colors in different places because as i was saying in the picture you see prominent colors and then you see like other pops of colors and so i wanted to do a look where 
you can see pops of color and then not overpower the look. I'm wondering if I want to go back with that gold and green on my inner rim, but I really don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. Because of the shade, it doesn't really show up much. But just for giggles, no, it doesn't do much. We're going to just refresh that. And this was the green that I used on the outer portion of my lower rim. Just to clarify, your waterline, this line in here, down here, and this line in here, up top, that's the waterline. That's what we also call your inner rim. I see some people saying, oh, we're tight lining the inner rim, and they're putting liner on their lower lash line. Or they'll say, we're tight lining the upper rim, and they're doing liner on the upper lash line. And I'm like, that's not the inner rim, and that's not the waterline. So I just wanted to throw that in there because I've been hearing that lately and it's been annoying me. Even professional makeup artists have been saying that and I'm like, that's not what that is. And I'm not a pro, but like, I know that. So anyway, taking off some chapstick. We're going to take Ofra's The Bronx, which is black, which was one of the colors in, in the picture. And I'm going to experiment. Y'all, I've been experimenting a lot lately, which you may have noticed if you've been watching my videos. Actually, most of these challenges or the I or the IG looks, most of them have been me experimenting, experimenting with color placement, experimenting with using gel liners as a base, experimenting with different color combinations. So I've really been digging it. So now what we're going to do, we're not going to leave this black, not all of it. We're going to take. Ofra's Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick, which is what this is. This was the Bronx. This one is Emerald City. It's supposed to be like a dual chrome, like a green and brown or something or other, but I see mostly brown. But we're going to put this on top of the black. Just to see hmm, what it does. That's the sound I make when I like my look. Mm. Hmm. Did that take away too much of the black? I do believe putting the black underneath did enhance this color because when I used it before, it was more subtle. I'm going to take a little bit more of the black, just a little bit, just for the outer corner. <laughs> I have a little mark here that I'm not liking. This brush has nothing on it. Just to straighten that line, hopefully. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use this brush and feather in the black. I have never used this brush for that before. I've only used it before for an inner corner highlight and for my brow bone highlight. This is the one I just used, as you can tell now it has lipstick on it. So I'm going to take a clean one and clean up this line right here, this mark. All right, so we're going in with the black just a little bit and I'm scraping off. I know I always do so good and then something happens and then it's not that good. A little bit of the green again. I know you guys are like, okay, just stop because this is when you really mess up. This is when you think you should stop and you keep going. All right, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> this is his look. Thank you ladies so much. And again, this is for on Instagram, hashtag Makeup Queens for Mel. And thank you to Lorraine and also that makeup. And again, I, I will put their Instagram handles down below. And you will see me in the next video. Thanks. Bye.